Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, Crossing New Frontiers to Conquer Today's Challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, UE St. Augustine. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am Philip Emma Aguale. In 1989, I experimentally discovered massively parallel processing, or how to communicate across computers and then compute simultaneously. I experimentally discovered how to harness 64 binary thousand processors, each processor akin to a tiny computer within an internet. I experimentally discovered how to program many processors and program them to compute together as one cohesive, seamless supercomputer that was the precursor to the modern supercomputer. I experimentally discovered how to solve the toughest problems in calculus and solve them across 64 binary thousand processors. My experimental discovery of the parallel processing power of the precursor to the modern supercomputer opened the door to today's fastest supercomputer that is powered by 10.65 million central processing units. A few days after my 1989 experimental discovery of massively parallel processing, the Computer Society of the IEEE, that was the world's largest computer society, issued a press release that I, Philip Emma Aguale, achieved a technological breakthrough in supercomputing. The IEEE is the acronym for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. In the May 1990 issue, of its academic journal named Software, the Computer Society of IEEE published an article on my experimental discovery of how to harness the computing power of massively parallel processing supercomputers. In that IEEE article, four supercomputer experts described how I experimentally discovered how to solve the toughest problem in calculus. The first supercomputer experts wrote that, quote, the amount of money at stake is staggering. For example, you can typically expect to recover 10% of a field's oil. If you can improve your production schedule to get just 1% more oil, you will increase your yield by $400 million, unquote. That, I, that 1989 press release that announced my technological breakthrough in massively parallel processing and the companion article published by the IEEE led to cover stories in mathematics publications and stories 
on my mathematical discoveries and in particular stories on my contributions to new algebra and new calculus. My contributions to algebra and calculus was the front page story of the June 1990 issue of the Siam News. The Siam News is where new mathematics is described by mathematicians and for mathematicians. My 16 year long mathematical quest to discover how to solve the toughest problem in calculus began on Thursday, June 20, 1974. That mathematical quest began on one of the world's fastest supercomputers that was at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Covalis, Oregon, United States. 16 years prior to my arrival in the United States, the first oil field in West Africa was discovered in Nigeria. The sister problem to my mathematical quest was to discover how to recover the most oil and gas and recover them from a newly discovered oil and gas field in Nigeria. For West Africa's first oil field that was discovered in 1958 at Oloibiri, Eastern region of the British West African colony of Nigeria, only about one in ten discovered barrels of oil could be recovered by using only primary technologies, such as merely digging a mile deep hole into the oil field. Secondary technologies, such as simulating the motions of the oil, water, and gas flowing from water injection wells to production wells, are used to recover more oil and gas. For the four decades inclusive of the 1950s through 60s, the supercomputer was used to simulate the motions of oil, water, and gas and used to discover and recover otherwise undiscoverable and unrecoverable oil and gas. For those four decades, the supercomputers purchased by the petroleum industry were powered by only one isolated central processing unit that was not a member of an ensemble of processors that communicates and computes together and as one seamless, cohesive supercomputer. In 1989, it made the news headlines that a lone wolf African supercomputer wizard in the United States had experimentally discovered how to harness an internet that is comprised of a global network of 65,536 central processing units and discovered how to use that internet to simulate the flow of oil, water, and gas. I, Philip Emma Aguale, is that African supercomputer scientist that was in the news in 1989 and in the news for experimentally discovering massively parallel processing. That experimental discovery changed the way we look at the supercomputer. In the old way, we looked at the supercomputer as harnessing the power of one isolated central processing unit. In the new way, we looked at the modern supercomputer 
as computing faster by harnessing the power of up to 10.65 million central processing units. After my experimental discovery of massively parallel processing, one in ten supercomputers are purchased by the petroleum industry alone. Briefly, the supercomputer improves global economic growth. The fastest supercomputer can cost more than the spacecraft that took men to the moon. I experimentally discovered how to use the modern supercomputer to solve the toughest problems in calculus. I experimentally discovered how to parallel process by doing many things at once and doing them to solve the toughest problems in calculus and solving them across an internet that is a global network of 64 binary thousand central processing units. My experimental discovery made the news headlines in 1989 and opened the door to the modern supercomputer that now computes with up to 10 binary million central processing units. For the four decades onward of 1946, the year the programmable computer was invented, the computer itself was redefined by the speed of its one and only one isolated central processing unit that was not a member of an ensemble of processors. That central processing unit solved only one mathematical problem at a time. In those four decades, parallel processing or solving many problems at once and solving them across as many central processing units seemed so impossible that no supercomputer scientist would touch parallel processing with a 10-foot pole. Solving the toughest problem in calculus is defined as theoretically and experimentally discovering how to harness an internet that is a global network of 65,536 central processing units and harness that internet to compute 65,536 times faster than one computer that computes with only one isolated central processing unit. The grand challenge in calculus was to experimentally discover how to harness the total processing power of that internet and harness it while solving the toughest and the most important problems that will make the world a better place and a more knowledgeable one. Many school reports are biographies of famous mathematicians and their contributions to mathematics. A seventh grader from Rhode Island, United States, that was writing a school report asked me, what did Philip Emma Aguale contribute to mathematics? If he was a research mathematician, my answer in the lingua franca of mathematicians will be that I contributed a system of coupled, nonlinear, and time dependent hyperbolic partial differential equations. That is the toughest problem in calculus that are known as Philip Emma Aguale's equations. Since he was only a seventh grader, my simplified answer 
was that I used my new calculus to experimentally discover what makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. My contributions to calculus was cover stories of top mathematics publications of the year 1990. However, I began my journey to the cover stories of mathematics publications and began it 20 years earlier. During a high school reunion at Christ the King College, Onicha, Nigeria, my schoolmates from 1970 only remembered me by my nickname, Calculus, not by my real name, Philip Emma Aguale. They called me Calculus because I was seen with the 568 page blue heart bound book that was titled An Introduction to the Infinitesimal Calculus. That Calculus book was subtitled with applications to mechanics and physics. That calculus book was written by G.W. George William Count. That calculus book was published by Oxford University Press. Calculus is the foundation of large-scale computational physics. Calculus is the common denominator between physics and the supercomputer. I studied calculus in June 1970 when I was in the 8th grade. I studied calculus for 20 years before my contributions to calculus was recognized as the cover story of the June 1990 issue of Siam News. The Siam News is the flagship publication of the Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics that was the premier society for research mathematicians. If a research supercomputer scientist that embarked on a quest for the fastest supercomputer is a polymath. There is a reservoir of knowledge that he or she can tap into when asked to solve the grand challenge problem or the toughest problem in supercomputing. It was called the toughest problem because it was impossible to solve. That grand challenge problem traverses the frontiers of mathematics, physics, and computer science. My 1970 textbook titled An Introduction to the Infinitesimal Calculus is in the public domain and can be read online with no cost. That textbook contains the foundational knowledge to the partial differential equations of calculus that must be solved across 64 binary thousand central processing units that was used to define the toughest problem in supercomputing. A person trained only in the computer sciences cannot solve 10 or perhaps one problem randomly selected from that public domain textbook. Therefore, a person trained only in the computer sciences cannot solve the grand challenge of supercomputing that implicitly requires the solution of the toughest problem in calculus. I'm asking you, how can you solve the toughest problem in calculus when you cannot solve the easiest problem in calculus? 
a supercomputer scientist that was only at the frontier of computing cannot solve the toughest problem in supercomputing that is defined and posed at the crossroads of the frontiers of the partial differential equations of calculus and that is defined and posed at the crossroads of the frontiers of the most large-scale system of equations of algebra and that is defined and posed at the crossroads of the frontiers of the most large-scale computational physics and that is defined and posed at the crossroads of the frontiers of the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built. I took 20 years onward of June 1970 to arrive at those frontiers and then to cross them and into the uncharted territory that was the massively parallel supercomputer that is the precursor of the modern supercomputer. For me, it was a wild journey through the minefields of uncharted technological territories. I say that the genius is an average person that worked hard to become above average. In 1989, I was in the news for my contributions to mathematics. I contributed nine partial differential equations to calculus. And calculus is the powerful technique that is the crown jewel of mathematics. I contributed nine algebraic knowledge. Nine I contributed new algebraic knowledge to the most large-scale algebra. I contributed new mathematical knowledge of how to approximate systems of partial differential equations of calculus and approximate each system with an almost equivalent system of equations of algebra. I contributed to computational mathematics, the new knowledge of how to email portions of those algebraic equations and email them to 65,536 or 2 to power 16 central processing units and to their unique 16 bit long email addresses that was a unique string of 16 zeros and ones. I experimentally discovered how to solve them across each of those central processing units and solve them with 16 orders of magnitude increase in supercomputing speed. I experimentally discovered how to reduce 65,536 days or 180 years of time to solution and reduce that time to solution to only one day of time to solution and reduce that time to solution by 16 orders of magnitude. My experimental discovery of 180 years in one day opened the door to the state of the art in supercomputing of 30,000 years in one day. It is the massively parallel processing that I experimentally discovered that powers the number one supercomputer in the world. 
That supercomputer is powered by 10.65 million central processing units that compute in parallel. Those contributions to calculus, algebra, and supercomputing were the reasons I, Philip M. Aguale, was the cover story of top mathematics publications such as the cover story of the June 1990 issue of Siam News that was published by the Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. During the 20 years onward of June 1970, I spent the first decade learning mathematics and spent the second decade contributing to mathematics. And my contribution to modern and abstract calculus had become newsworthy and noteworthy to the extent I was getting telephone calls from the likes of G.W. George William Count to speak at top mathematics conferences, which led to my lecture on July 8, 1991 in Washington, D.C., at the International Congress of Industrial and Applied Mathematics that was the biggest gathering of mathematicians. G.W. Count wrote the Magnus Opus titled An Introduction to the Infinitesimal Calculus. It was subtitled with applications to mechanics and physics. If G.W. Count could have revised his Magnus Opus, he will revise a 1989 edition of his 1914 edition of his 568-page Magnus Opus. And G.W. George William Count will update his 1914 calculus with a 40-page contribution on 1989 calculus that was written by Philip M. Aguale and subtitled with, applica with supercomputer applications or with applications to parallel processing across billions of central processing units. Calculus is a living body of knowledge my contributions to calculus represent the growth across the 75 years onward of 1914. To any mathematician that came of age at the beginning of the 20th century, my contributions to calculus turned mathematical science fiction to non-fiction. The reason Philip M. Aguale is the subject of school reports on inventors and their inventions is that I experimentally discovered how to execute large-scale floating-point arithmetical computations. Such computation-intensive problems had their roots in a large-scale system of equations of algebra. I translated those system of equations from a system of partial differential equations of calculus that I formulated from a set of laws of physics. I experimentally discovered how to reduce 65,536 days or 180 years of time to solution of the most large-scale problems in computational physics, I experimentally discovered how to reduce time to solution from 180 years on one computer to only one day of time to solution across one primordial internet. I invented that internet 
as a global network of 65,536 central processing units that we are identical and equidistant from their nearest neighboring units. I invented that internet as a global network of as many computers that we are identical and we are identically connected and we are equal distances are far and apart from each other. That experimental discovery was beyond mathematics textbook writing and science fiction writing. In today's market, the 16 supercomputers that I programmed as a lone wolf and programmed in the 1980s cost the budget of a small nation. In the 1970s and 80s, I conducted my research alone and conducted my research in the uncharted territory of the massively parallel supercomputer that is the precursor of the modern supercomputer. I conducted research alone and I did so because it was the toughest problem in supercomputing. I conducted research alone because the 25,000 programmers of the vector processing supercomputers of the 1980s we are terrified thinking about synchronously sending and simultaneously receiving 65,536 email messages that each contained my step-by-step -step instructions on how to solve an initial boundary value problem of calculus. Massively parallel supercomputing was called a grand challenge for the good reason that it was impossible to harness its potential. A novelist or a science fiction writer can solve problems with a pen but I cannot buy a billion dollar supercomputer with a mere wave of the pen. It's even more difficult when you are black and African and conducting scientific research as a lone wolf in the United States. Calculus is the common denominator across every supercomputer that computes in parallel. Nine in ten cycles of every supercomputer solves problems with their roots in calculus. I studied calculus in June 1970 in eighth grade at Christ King College, Onicha, Nigeria. Because I stood out for studying calculus in 8th grade, everybody at Christ King College called me calculus. And nobody at Christ King College called me Philip Emagwale. I programmed scalar processing supercomputers on June 20, 1974, at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Corvallis, Oregon, United States. I experimentally discovered how to harness a primordial internet that is a global network of 64 binary thousand central processing units. I experimentally discovered how to harness that internet to execute a set of floating point arithmetical problems. Those arithmetical problems arose from a system of equations of algebra 
those algebraic problems arose from a system of partial differential equations of calculus. Those partial differential equations arose from a set of laws of physics. And those laws of physics describe the precise motions that we are coded as algorithms and encoded into general circulation models. And general circulation models are used to foresee otherwise unforeseeable global warming. In September 1981, I was living in Silver Spring, Maryland and studying in both Washington, D.C. and College Park, Maryland. And College Park, Maryland. I conduct and conducting research, conducting super computing research in Silver Spring, Maryland. I had spent the prior seven years programming supercomputers. For my growing knowledge of supercomputing, I was perceived as a threat. I was banned from programming the Cyber 205 vector supercomputer. That vector supercomputer was purchased by the United States National Weather Service that was part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. That vector supercomputer was used to solve the primitive equations of meteorology. The primitive equations were a system of coupled, nonlinear, and time-dependent partial differential equations that were hyperbolic. To quote myself from a calculus lecture that I gave in 1981, quote, the dependent variables of the primitive equations of meteorology include the temperatures, the speeds, and the pressures of the air and atmosphere that flows above the surface of the earth. A supercomputer is needed to solve those dependent variables and to compute them at several levels of the earth's atmosphere. Unquote. The Cyber 205 vector processing supercomputer that I was banned from programming back in 1981 evolved into the ETA supercomputer and because I was banned from programming vector su processing supercomputers I involuntarily but fortunately evolved into the lone wolf programmer of the most massively parallel processing supercomputer ever built. A decade later, and in 1991, I crossed paths with the Cyber 205 vector processing supercomputer. I lived across the street from the head office of ETA Corporation that was within Energy Park and adjacent to Bandana Square, St. Paul, Minnesota. Back in 1981, the Cyber 205 that I was prevented from programming was a vector processing supercomputer that was housed at the National Meteorological Center in Camp Springs, Maryland. The National Meteorological Center is the forecasting heart of the National Weather Service. In the 1980s, 25,000 scientists were allowed to program vector processing supercomputers. I was not one of those 25,000 scientists. Instead, I was relegated to conducting my supercomputer research alone. I computed alone 
and coded in cold basement labs. In the world of supercomputers, I had to experimentally discover that the impossible is in fact possible. 20 years later, and in a speech televised on August 26, 2000, then President Bill Clinton acknowledged my contributions to the development of the supercomputer that computes in parallel and that is the precursor to the modern supercomputer. In the 1970s and 80s, Parallel processing was really cold as a huge waste of everybody's time. The last thing that I learned from being exiled from the world of supercomputers was that closing the door to the known world of vector processing supercomputers opened the door to the unknown world of parallel processing supercomputers. I learned that when one door closes, another door opens. In 1989, that contribution to calculus was the reason a 15-year-old writing a school report on the development of modern calculus asked me to explain the contributions of Philip M. Aguale to modern calculus. I explained that my mathematical quest was for the most important and the most advanced calculus that can be discovered, that could be discovered at the uncharted territory of partial differential equations of calculus. It was in that unknown world of calculus that I invented a system of nine partial differential equations of calculus that are known as Philip M. Aguale's equations that are coupled to each other, that are nonlinear, that are time dependent, and that are hyperbolic instead of parabolic, as described in calculus textbooks. I originally formulated my system of equations for the blackboard and defined each at infinite points in space and time. Then I discretized and reformulated my system of equations of calculus and redefined each partial differential equation at finite points in space and time. That discretization of partial differential equations and their reformulation and approximation as algebraic equations gave rise to my large-scale system of equations of algebra that could be computationally solved by step-by-step -step instructions that is a finite number of floating point arithmetical operations. I experimentally discovered how to solve that large scale problem in algebra and computationally solve it on a motherboard or experimentally solve it across a primordial internet. I invented that internet as a global network of motherboards or central processing units or computers. I coded my system of equations of algebra and solved that system as a set of floating point arithmetical operations. In 1989, it made the news headlines that a 35-year-old African supercomputer wizard born in Akure, Nigeria and living in the United States 
had experimentally discovered how to execute those floating point operations and execute them across an internet that he invented as a global network of 64 binary thousand motherboards. I, Philip M. Aguale, was that African supercomputer wizard. I experimentally discovered how to solve 24 million equations of algebra that was a world record in 1989. I experimentally discovered how to solve the most large-scale algebraic problems and solve them at the fastest speeds of arithmetical computation and email communication that could be recorded across an internet that is a global network of 64 binary thousand central processing units. My quest was for new calculus or new partial differential equations and for how to approximate my new calculus with the largest scale algebra and use that algebra as the mathematical foundation of my large-scale computational fluid dynamics codes. I executed those computation-intensive codes across a primordial internet. I invented that internet as a global network of 64 binary thousand central processing units or a global network of as many computers that are distributed equal distances apart and afar and distributed across the surface of a globe in a 16-dimensional universe. That primordial internet that is a supercomputer de facto that I invented is to calculus what the telescope is to astronomy or the microscope is to biology or the x-ray machine is to medicine. Back in 1974 and 75, my research interests were in astrophysics not in supercomputers. In 1974, the supercomputer was only a hobby to me. By 1975, I had taken all the astronomy courses offered within the state of Oregon. However, it was my mentor, Fred Merrifield, that advised me to switch from astronomy to engineering. There were more jobs in engineering than in astronomy. But ironically, my first job offer was to be an astronomer in Washington, D.C. Fred Merrifield was a man of means and I was living with him and his wife, Anne, in 1975 and 1976, and at 2540 Southwest Whitside Road, Corvallis, Oregon. In 1946, and the year the programmable computer was invented, Fred Merrifield founded the top engineering firm, CH2M. In our series of after-dinner conversations, Fred Merrifield remotely and subconsciously teleguided me from the astrophysics of distant stars to the geophysics of planet Earth. That's how I acquired expertise in terrestrial and engineering physics such as hydraulics, hydrology, meteorology, oceanography, and fluvial geomorphology. 
In my few years of insanity, I switched from the physics of the heavens to the geophysics and the large-scale computational fluid dynamics of the earth, air, and sea. But I had to first travel across the unknown world or the terra incognita of large-scale computational physics and the terra incognita of partial differential equations of calculus and the terra incognita of large-scale algebra. I had to I had to travel those frontiers before I could travel across the terra incognita that was my global network of 64 binary thousand central processing units that we are braided together as one cohesive whole computer and braided together by one binary million email wires and braided together as an internet. <clears throat> what helped me in my quest for the fastest supercomputer was that I was on the right path despite my numerous zigzags and side detours. After the first rough decade, I saw a light and saw an internet at the end of my dark tunnel that was my global network of central processing units. How to use that massively parallel supercomputer and use it to solve otherwise unsolvable problems such as initial boundary value problems at the frontier of modern calculus is the reason 15-year-olds are writing school reports on the contributions of Philip Emaguale to modern calculus. <clears throat> to the non-mathematician, my mathematical discoveries are abstract and invincible. The nine partial differential equations of calculus that I invented were described by mathematicians and for mathematicians and was the cover story of the May 1990 issue of Siam News. In the June 1990 issue of Siam News, a research computational mathematician wrote that, quote, I have checked with several reservoir engineers who feel that his calculation is of real importance and very fast. His explicit method not only generates lots of mega flops, but solves problems faster than implicit methods. Emma Aguale is the first to have applied a pseudo time approach in reservoir modeling. End of quote. The Siam News is the bi-monthly publication of the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, which is the premier society for mathematicians. The Siam News is where news what the partial differential equations of modern calculus are published and presented to the foremost experts in modern calculus. My contribution to mathematics is this. In the 1970s and 80s, I correctly reformulated the second law of motion of physics that was discovered 330 years ago. I correctly reformulated that law and correctly encoded it into the most advanced expressions in calculus. Those calculus expressions consisted of 81 
partial derivative terms that encoded the motions of oil, water, and gas in the X, Y, and Z directions that comprised of 45 partial derivative terms that were in advanced calculus textbooks plus the 36 partial derivative terms that I invented that we are not in any calculus textbook. Put differently, the cover story of the May 1990 issue of the Siam News, that is the number one publication for new mathematics, described the system of nine coupled nonlinear and time dependent partial differential equations that I invented and that is my contribution to modern calculus. Those nine partial differential equations that I invented are akin to the system of partial differential equations that is cross-listed in the seven millennium problems of mathematics and that is one of the seven toughest problems in mathematics. My grand challenge in supercomputing was to experimentally discover how to make the impossible to compute possible to compute and to do so by experimentally discovering massively parallel processing that computes faster and makes supercomputers fastest. I experimentally discovered how to solve that grand challenge problem that is the toughest problem in calculus. And I experimentally discovered how to solve it by mathematically discovering how to reduce those system of partial differential equations that were defined in the interior of the domain of an initial boundary value problem and reduce them into their equivalent algebraic equations and finally how to email equal portions of those algebraic equations to my 65,536 central processing units that I visualized as equidistant from each other and that I visualized as encircling and tightly circumscribing a globe in a 16-dimensional hyperspace. The abacus was invented 3,000 years ago and invented in ancient China. The word computer was coined 7,000 years ago. Seven, the word computer was coined 700 years ago. Calculus was invented 330 years ago. The phrase partial differential equation was first used in 1845, a century and one year later, the programmable computer was invented in 1946 and was invented for solving the ordinary differential equation that governs the, govern the motions of ballistics. That te the technology called parallel processing that powered an internet that is a global network of 65,536 programmable processors or a global network of as many programmable computers was experimentally discovered in 1989. I, Philip M. Aguale, was the lone wolf supercomputer programmer that invented that internet and programmed the processors 
within that internet to compute together as one cohesive seamless supercomputer that is the precursor of the modern supercomputer that can solve a system of coupled nonlinear and time dependent partial differential equations of modern calculus. I invented nine of those partial differential equations called Philip M. R. Wallis equations. I experimentally discovered how to use parallel processing and use the technology to recover otherwise unrecoverable oil and gas and how to use parallel processing to foresee otherwise unforeseeable global climate change and how to use parallel processing to reduce 65,536 days or 108 years of time to solution of the most large-scale problems in computational physics and reduce it to just one day of time to solution across a global network of 65,536 processors that outline an internet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Insightful and brilliant lecture.